let's go here with the front which has the light strip that goes all the way through you have this retro vw logo right here and of course also the main headroom unit with matrix led available this color here is aqua marine blue very nice subtle blue color but also a little bit brighter when the light shines on it but we also have a white car for you here available on location just that you can see the difference main design thing is of course aerodynamics supposed to be very efficient and in our first test drive we could indeed achieve really good consumption figures some four miles per kilowatt hour or some 15 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers that will lead to great range at least in ideal conditions more to that later you can see it also design wise here this bow is also standard a good contrast then to the blue color the wheels either 19 inch or here the optional 20 inch wheels these are then the optional the biggest ones the length here is four meters 96 or 195 inches so indeed a full ev or full size ev sedan towards the rear we can see this light strip goes all the way through right here three-dimensional design here this side reminds me a little bit of tesla model s right and indeed they want to fight tesla model s and tesla model 3 size wise already against the model s price wise against the model 3 because the entry version is supposed to be way below sixty thousand euros or dollars with the small battery Let's talk about small battery 77 kilowatt hours net that is the battery we know already from the id4 for example and then there will be a bigger one available 86 kilowatt hours net for the small battery 170 kilowatt dc 200 kilowatt dc for the big battery and then you'll have some 25 minutes from 10 to 80 percent state of charge talking about rear it starts with rear wheel drive 286 horsepower later on there will be an all-wheel drive version available probably a gtx acceleration figure here so far it will be something less than seven seconds to one kilometers or 62 miles an hour turning indicators really impressive because they are very wide and and look at that the rear turning indicator come around here then you can see this three layer shape that's a very interesting idea and it also features a welcoming or goodbye signature here when i open the vehicle look at that oh that looks fancy and you can actually pick three different stylings this is number three now the most extensive one so to speak you know when i close the vehicle you can also change the waiting time for this when it dissolves and when it dissolves then once again as a goodbye signature there we go <laughs> And here this is like the goodbye feature in the front goes down and when you open the vehicle again you also once again have a welcoming signature here goes up and illuminate it in this cascading style now to the key fob this is the standard high gloss one i think a new one would be more suitable then here flush door handles they have some haptic feedback at the back part when you open it and if everything should fail there's still a manual face that you can fold the whole thing up door closing sound That could be better. I think a classic golf door closing sound was better in that case. However, at the inside of the doors is great build quality. Structure on the top here, soft touch. Then here the high grade leatherette, blue accentuation stripe. Interesting new solution here for the door handle. It opens already here, you know. So in the rear for the children, maybe not the best solution. And then the only thing I do criticize here, the window levers is good quality, but then you only have two and you have to press rear to change them in the rear. Some like it, some don't. What about you? Also here felt inside of this storage box. So I'm really happy with the build quality indeed. Then there are three different seats. A base fabric seat, then it has less accentuations, especially in the upper shoulder part. And this one here is the optional seat, ergo active, available in the comfort or the premium trim. But here, this of course, really cozy. The seats are great. I feel among best in segment and probably among the best in the EVs overall. So great comfort, still a lot of headroom here with the panoramic roof. I'll soon also show you how it's the headroom without the panoramic roof. This panoramic roof here is also special because it has the electrochromic function. And it means we have a slider here. I don't like sliders, but you can see it here. This is really cool. We know it from other vehicles, not completely new, but new for Volkswagen. Porsche used it before, for example, and then you can have view through or protection against the sun. Pretty cool indeed. And the steering wheel, manual control, up and down, in and out. 
I love the bright steering wheel and the bright materials also have become more durable and so on. India cockpit overview, clean layout indeed, horizontal stress, 15 inch screen, really large indeed. And you still have the temperature sliders. It will take one more generation of cars to go back to the physical knobs at Volkswagen. However, these are now backlit and also the ambient lighting you can very well see at night for example that's pretty cool indeed then the shifting lever is here behind the steering wheel d reverse or then for parking you can also go to the recuperation mode here on the steering wheel you have the hashtag capacitive bs buttons they also have some kind of feedback they're also backlit that looks cool but still not the best solution but also from that volkswagen will go back once again and then you have a small digital instruments here not too much to see but actually clear to read and the focus is then the head-up display which is standard equipment with also augmented reality function the infotainment has this app overview that's new and i think really helpful and you see it's also more responsive than before so definitely step up the game yes the temperature is still controlled right here um, or you can do it like this so this would also be possible and then you also have this menu for the seat heating or seat cooling really interesting that it has moist sensors so when there's moist felt in the seat the ventilation will automatically go on together with a little little bit of seat heating that's also pretty interesting and then you also have this main overview which you can individualize you can have your own tiles there basically so a lot you can do with that but the most important thing is that it is more responsive and apple carplay and an auto wireless and wow look at that integration indeed and the harman Kardon sound system is indeed uh, yo whoa <laughs> really bass intensive but definitely also a new sound experience here for a volkswagen a matte cover here then in bright or black in the dark interior and then you have a lot of space just like this thing is not maybe the best build quality or could be a little bit better but here in the bright interior i think it's also cool that you don't have high gloss black piano lacquer here two usb-c chargers inductive chargers and then also here the pads that they are also hold tight the bottles also and then you have the split opening for the armrest like this with a lot of space underneath end of this new system you also have these automatic vents here the air vents yeah we know that from tesla for example you can also see it right here when i control them in the infotainment system left and right for example hmm, is that really needed i don't know to all parents here in the front door this is the child lock for the rear door because when young children are playing in the rear and they do like this the door is opened so definitely use the child lock when you have young, unexperienced children in the rear. Just look at that, how much lacquer we still have. Even if I am driving in the front, this is enormous. And from a seating comfort, indeed, this is also great in the rear. Headroom, of course, this here being the fastback model. Still some headroom left with 189 or 6 for 2. You can put down this here. Not adaptive, the cup holders, though. This is the ski hatch. And in the middle part here, lower part, we have a separate climate unit for the rear seats and also seat heating is possible. Underneath there's two USB seat charging. And also here, because the trunk is opening in the fastback way, and this is of course then easier to access like in Tesla Model 3 or the Ionic 6 and so on. And underneath the cover, you can either store some charging cables, even more down so below, so either there or you can also remove this whole thing to get even more height that would be possible then you don't have an even loading sill and then there's the retractable towing hook when i pull this one it comes out underneath right here and at eight percent of incline you have around 1.2 tons of towing capacity and at 12 percent it's one ton so not too much but of course better than nothing I have not opened the hood yet, so this will come as a surprise to me as well. Will it frunk or will it not? Let's find out. No, it doesn't. Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge. Acceleration with the ID7 rear-wheel drive. Plop, that's 80. Pretty quick indeed. 
to 100 kilometers an hour or 62 miles an hour is less than seven seconds. And this will count both for the smaller and the bigger battery. Here we're driving the 77 kilowatt hour battery, but the 86 kilowatt hour battery will not be that much heavier. So both in driving and also in acceleration, it won't make a significant difference. We are in the sport mode for the best boost. Also the throttle input is a little bit more sensitive and I also have a little bit more feedback from the steering wheel. I think it's more likable. The steering wheel itself is light, but still somewhat natural. You have to steer quite a lot, yes, but they also use a progressive steering thing. So it is basically then with this increasing input, it still feels natural, but that you don't have to oversteer, so to speak. Also when parking in and out, I soon can also show that to you. Even in the sport mode, suspension-wise, I can go over these speed humps and so on. But if I want it more comfortable, going here to the comfort mode, and yeah, you immediately feel that the suspension gets a little bit softer. They reworked both the standard suspension and the DCC. So it's both, so to speak, new. And DCC will give you more comfort, but also more sportiness at the very same time. We have rear-wheel drive. That means I have full control over the front wheels. The whole car feels very well controllable. We have the low center of gravity. The battery basically push it, is, pushes it to the ground. So it feels also like very good grip. And it is, although it is a large vehicle, really a lot of fun to drive. You don't feel the length. It has a significant wheelbase of almost three meters and still it handles relatively light. And also in our second test drive, we reached some 15 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer or four miles per kilowatt hour. Very impressive indeed. That would be a real world range of 500 kilometers or 300 miles for the small battery and 570 kilometers or 350 miles for the big battery. So if you want to tune into the Ionic 6 or the Mercedes EQE, yes, you can compare it to that. It's just lower in price. Check it out.